Oh. Hey, Mr. Baldwin, this is an earth-shaking experience recording this video with you. Let's do this. This <laughs> looks right. like my morning commute on the way to school. Oh, that's a little rough. <laughs> I'd like to be riding on one of those motorcycles in that nice tropical environment. So let's take a look at what our first video is here for earthquakes and Earth's interior. So we're going to be defining some simple stuff. So earthquake intensity, magnitude, and moment magnitude. Uh, yeah. Looking at damage and how we use damage to figure out how intense an earthquake was. And then factors to determine the extent of damage, like after an earthquake. Okay, sounds good. Let's jump into this. So here we've got two different ways to answer the question of how big was that earthquake. Mm -hmm. The first way is the more traditional way of mm -hmm. the magnitude. And so when you tune into the news and you hear about a magnitude 7.8 earthquake that just happened in Pakistan last week, you're hearing about the Richter magnitude. So what is the Richter magnitude? Well, basically, it just gives a single number to an event that tells you how much energy was given off, so how much energy was released. So, And it usually ranges from 0 to 10, but I think theoretically it can get bigger than that, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So it doesn't say anything about whether there was any damage. It's just based on how much energy was released, whether there was anybody there to see it, feel it, how much energy was released. It's like that if a tree fell in the woods and no one was there to hear it, would you hear it or would it make a noise? This one is, you know, if there's an earthquake and no one's there, we can still figure out how much energy was released. So the energy, energy that's being released is released when there's rapid movement along a fault. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, the second way to, to define that. Yeah, this is a, uh, an older one that they use is the Mercalli index, Intensity Index. And basically they look at a seismic event. So when we say seismic event, we're talking about shifts in the plates of Earth mm -hmm. and how it affects people, structures, and objects. Okay. Okay. So they'll look in like to if trees were swaying or if dishes fell or mm -hmm. if buildings got you know launched into the ocean. Okay. So we want to listen for two different words. We want to listen for the word magnitude mm -hmm. or the word intensity. Okay. Okay. Oh, in Mercalli Index, uh, they use Roman numerals. So ah. it's from 1, which is I, to 12, which is XII. Good. All right. So let's look at first the Mercalli Intensity Index and see how that's set up. Cool. Okay. So for the Mercalli Intensity Index, you're going to see, again, numbers 1 through 12. And this is going to describe the amount of damage that was done in pretty user-friendly terms. Mm -hmm. So, for example, the 1 on the Mercalli Intensity Index is it wasn't even felt. There was some shaking. There was some movement. It was detected by seismic uh, instruments, but people generally didn't even know it had happened. Mm -hmm. And then going up towards 12, what are some of the other interesting ones? Uh, some of the cool ones is you get like partial collapse of masonry at uh, level 8. Uh, mm -hmm. So like frame houses are moved. When we say a frame, like kind of a wood framed house. Okay. Um, you can have like for 10 buildings and bridges destroyed, uh, rails bent. So like talking like train tracks bending those, mm -hmm. uh, pipelines severely damaged. And then 12, that's like the big kahuna damaged everything. Okay. So earthquakes that have happened recently in the last five or six years here that have been felt in the Chicago area, they've been more like... Uh, number four on the intensity index that mm -hmm. feels like oh a heavy truck just went by or there's a train nearby it's a little bit of shaking you feel a little bit of movement but it's not this big rocking and rolling kind of thing yeah a lot of times the ones in chicago people just think that the garbage truck came early that day somebody bumped your chair yeah okay then the magnitude the richter magnitude um, in this slide you're going to see how this is actually determined from the seismic record so the use of the amplitude, that's from the baseline to the top of the crest mm -hmm. or the bottom of the trough, mm -hmm. that measurement on the uh, wave that's recorded in the seismogram, right? Mm -hmm. And you use that along with the lag time between the S and the P waves. And we're going to get more into that in class, mm -hmm. but it's a pretty simple thing to determine the Richter magnitude kind of based on this. So what do you want to add to that? Yeah, and basically if you're really close to the epicenter of an earthquake. Mm -hmm. Basically, the lag time is really small. And if you get really, really big waves, that's what you would expect. But if you're further away and the waves are still really, really big, mm -hmm. then you end up having even a larger amplitude earthquake, or a larger, sorry, magnitude earthquake. OK. So then there's a third way, and this is the currently accepted way by USGS, and it's called the moment magnitude. So what are we, I mean, what are we talking about with moment yeah, magnitude? So here? the moment magnitude takes into account some additional factors. It takes into account a measurement of how far, there, how far the 
movement was along that particular fault. So they're going to talk about the slip distance. So if you are looking at a transform fault, it's how far did it move okay. in that earthquake. And then along with it, they look at the rigidity of the rock. Now, so is it softer rock or is it harder rock? Okay. And there's kind of a constant that's assigned to that rock. Because most rocks break at certain pressures. and okay. Yeah. And then they look at the area of the rupture on that fault. So not only the distance that it moved, but actually the area of movement on that whole fault plane. Okay, this one seems a lot more complicated it to is. figure out. Yeah. It is a lot more complicated. But I think the interesting part of this is, is that you come up with this bit of information that says when you go from a magnitude 7 mm -hmm. on the Richter scale to a magnitude 8 on uh -huh. the Richter scale, that there's 32 times more energy wow. okay. being released in that earthquake. Okay. Um, and also, there's a really great magnitude simulator that you can play around with. So students, if you want to jump out and play around with that simulator after you're finished taking notes on this one, uh, I think you probably would enjoy doing that. It's a lot of fun. That was my Saturday night activity right there. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, some damage in earthquakes. There's a lot of different ways where we're destroying things in earthquakes. Um, and here's a couple of them. It's liquefaction, tsunami, fires, floods, landslides, avalanches. We'll talk about each of them. Okay. Uh, so if you want to talk about liquefaction first, we've got a good picture here in the bottom left-hand corner. Yeah, if you look in the bottom left-hand corner, you see that uh, building that's kind of sunk into the ground a little bit. Now what happened was there's a little bit of moisture in the soil already. Mm -hmm. And when you shake it, what ends up happening is the soil behaves as a liquid. Okay, And so what ends up happening is buildings start sinking into it. You can have entire, almost like a mudslide, but not quite. But basically the ground will flow as a liquid. Mm -hmm. So this is always more dominant in areas that have been filled in, mm -hmm. so landfill areas. Mm -hmm. Like if you're in Chicago, the entire region where Millennium Park is. That's all landfill. That's all landfill. So if there were a major earthquake, some of those structures might be impacted by liquefaction. A Other, lot of Northwestern University, a lot of that is a landfill yeah, too. Yeah. yeah, and if you look at California, so San Francisco, where there are a lot of earthquakes, the entire Fisherman's Wharf area, that's mm -hmm. all been filled in, mm -hmm. man-made. Uh, developed areas and that area is really prone to liquefaction so you're going to see damage like this where buildings have sunk into or structures have sunk into the the surface okay how about tsunami well tsunami is probably the one you get they're most familiar with uh, anytime you release a lot of energy when it's nearby a body of water a lot of times it's underwater um, you end up generating a wave that goes out in all directions and when that wave hits land it releases a lot more energy so you can see waves that are up to like 30 feet high, mm -hmm. and they cause an amazing amount of damage. It's something like uh, the majority of the population of the Earth lives within uh, the first few couple miles of a coastline, mm -hmm. and it's a big problem for them when they have a tsunami in the area. So we're going to look at that really in depth uh, next week in class when we look at the tsunami that happened mm -hmm. a few years ago. Okay, fires and floods, so fires are often triggered when there's an earthquake and when things like gas lines mm, yeah. are ruptured underground. Okay. And that is what causes those fires. Mm -hmm. And sometimes floods are triggered through dams that are breached mm -hmm. and releasing large amounts of water from that earthquake. Mm -hmm. And then a couple other ones here, landslides. Yeah, landslides and avalanches are really similar. Um, basically, you've got some rock or body of land that's not quite stable. And when you add a little bit of energy, it's going to start moving downhill from gravity. Okay. And if there's a building on it, it's going with it's it. It's going there. If right. you're on it, you're going with it. Okay. Sounds good. So I think uh, that was our last slide for this section. That's so, it. So uh, take your notes, go back and watch the video if you need to, jump out, go to your class website, and take your... Quiz. Yay. You got All a right. quiz. Thanks, Mr. Baldwin. Thanks, Mr. Baldwin. We'll see you see later. Ya. Bye, guys.